and turn to Proverbs chapter 14. I want to talk to you about time tonight. Time, if you've ever heard Pastor Dean say, time is the money of life. I love that statement. He's like, I thought money was the money of life. You know what I mean? He has all these very simple statements, but they're very thought provoking. And so he says time is the money of life, and that is absolutely true. Just like when your paycheck comes into your hands, you have a choice in how you're going to spend that money. Anybody ever like blown their whole paycheck before? Anybody ever got some money? It's like, oh, I, got a money, I got some money burning a hole in my pocket. You know what I mean? What does that mean? I got some money. I'm ready to spend it. Let's go to the mall. Let's go somewhere, right? But time is the money of life. So number one, there is a time for fun. Everybody say there's a time for fun. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30 says, A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. You know, it's important that we be in a good place in our heart. And unfortunately, I've met Christians who are like, they, what happens is, unfortunately, they get a little bit religious and they get a little bit weird. And they're going through some of the motions that are required for us to abide in the vine, for us to, to um, have relationship with God. And they, maybe they're diligent in, in, their, in their Bible reading or something like that. But it's just like, you know, you, you just have a look on your face like you need to have fun. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we can't be too serious. Like, if we're, like, we're walking around, like, mad, but, like, yet we read our Bible every day. Like, who, who's going to want to be a Christian based on the look on your face? Nobody. So maybe that person, though they are spending time with God, it's like, bro, you're, you're, you're over into works. You need to just take a deep breath and just, like, have a friend and just go to the trampoline park and hyperextend your knee or something. You know, have fun. Do something. There's a time for fun. You know, Proverbs also says in 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 13, it says, A merry heart makes for a cheerful countenance, but sorrow of heart, the spirit is broken. You know, Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart does good like a what? Like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. You know, there's a time to have fun. Anybody ever like, are you that kind of person who like, you like to make jokes like at the worst time possible? That's me. I don't know why. I don't know. It's like, I knew it wasn't the right thing to say, but I couldn't stop myself. (laughs) Anybody ever heard that phrase? You play too much. You play too much, right? There's some of us, we just like to have fun all the time even at the inopportune times and the wrong times. But there's others who's just like, you need to have some fun. And so there's seasons to our life, but in every season of your life, there needs to be time for fun. Amen? Now, that's number one, time for fun. Number two, a time for serving. I am very passionate about serving. Turn to Philippians chapter 2. I am very, I like to serve so much. Philippians chapter 2, but let's bring some context to our serving. Verse, let's look at 3, chapter 2, verse 3. Paul, the apostle Paul, wrote the book of Philippians to the church at Philippi, and he said, Do nothing from a selfish ambition or conceit point of view, but in humility. Everybody say humility. Count others more significant than yourself. See, when you serve, you could serve maybe a friend or a family member. You could serve at church. There's many different ways you can serve. It says, count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only at your own interest, but also the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But what did Jesus do? He emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient even to the point of death. Did you know that Jesus in his life served us through the power of what he accomplished. He served us today in 2022, way back then with his life. Why? Because he humbled himself. And he made a decision to not be thinking about his own interests, but to be obedient to what the Father had in store for him, which was a life of servanthood. Amen? Turn to Colossians 
just to the right a couple pages, chapter 3. Let's look at verse 23. Colossians chapter 3, we'll look at 23 and 24. Paul, here writing to the church at Colossae, said, Whatever you do, work heartily. Everybody say, work heartily. You know, one of the things that I have a great challenge with is when people are lazy. I don't know why. I mean, I just, I've always worked all my life. Now, I'm not going to say I loved it. But I enjoyed working. I enjoyed putting my hand to something and and reaping a paycheck for doing that. The Bible says the hand of the diligent will be made rich. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't what? Eat. So I would encourage you, put laziness out of your life. It's so important. It's so important. This is one of the things I love about Pastors Dean and Kathy. They are very hard workers. They literally have been putting in work year after year after year. You know, most people, their age, Pastor Dean's like 76, Pastor Kathy's 70. They're like in their 70s. Most people are like looking for a recliner on the beach. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to do nothing, right? But they're still up here early and up here late and like going and getting it. And, And I love that work ethic about them. But Paul said, work heartily, but as for the Lord and not unto men. What does that mean? Right, right. It doesn't mean like, well, I'm not going to work for any man because I'm supposed to work for the Lord. No, bro, you missed the point. You're not doing, you're not doing, some people, man. Oh, man. You're not doing what you're doing to be seen of men. You're not like, I'm going to work hard because I know the boss is here and he could pop through the door at any time. That means you're doing it as unto men. But when you do it as unto the Lord, you do it the exact same, and you work hard whether the boss man's here or you know he's out of town on vacation, he ain't going to be back for four days. Why? Because you're doing it as unto the Lord. Amen. So I encourage you um, to cultivate that in your life. And then let me give you one more here as it pertains to a time for serving. So we got a time for fun, and we got a time for serving. 1 Peter 4.10 says, and this is the ESV, the English Standard Version, says, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks the oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Serve one another. You know, the Bible talks about preferring one another. Like when you prefer somebody else and you let them choose, you're actually serving them. We should be service-minded. How can I serve the Lord? How can I serve my family better? How can I serve my friends? How can I serve my boss better? Did you know if you have that mindset, how can I serve my boss better, it's going to pay off for you? Because most people don't think that way. So there's a time for fun. There's a time for serving. And, and, And I love that. And It's so important that you understand how important serving is. But one of the things that I see being so detrimental is when people serve God, but they don't have relationship with God. It's so detrimental, and I hate to see it, and that's really why I know. It's funny because this had been stirring in my heart, uh, I would say, over the past few days. And and, um, when I was praying and I was just seeking the Lord for direction on this, it, it, it like came up in my spirit, time, time, time is the money of life. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about time. I want to talk about people who serve you at church, but they have zero relationship with you. And then the Lord, like, he's like, okay, bro, I already know what you're thinking, but just listen. Right? Where there's a time for fun, there's a time for serving, but there has to be time for relationship. Did you know God doesn't want you to just serve here at church and be an usher or serve in the parking lot or serve on the worship team or sweep the floor or whatever? You know, there's, a, there's so many places to serve at church, whatever. It doesn't matter. He doesn't want you to serve but yet not have relationship with him. You come to or nights, or, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the thing is. It's just that you can't be plugged in and serve God and not spend any time with God. So there's a time for fun, and there is a time for serving, and you should serve. Jesus was a servant. 
but never at the expense of your relationship with God. So it's this time for, you know, we don't use the word fellowship, but let's say relationship. There's a time for relationship. And another thing is, you have to make the time for relationship. Don't we all make time for what's important for us? And it's like, you know, like when there's something you don't want to do, I really don't have time. I kind of, kind of got a few things going. Like something you don't want to do. Make. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, we're going to the movie. I got time. Yeah, let's go. What time? Is it 7 or 9.15, 9.30? What time? Right? All of a sudden our schedule's clear. Why? Because that's something we actually want to do. Anybody ever been guilty of that? You're like, no, guys, I'm going to study tonight. And they're like, hey, we changed our mind. We're going to the movie. Okay, I'm done studying, right? <laughs> we make time for what we want. And I want you guys to make time for God. I love that you guys serve, and I think it's important that you serve. Um, but listen, if just me as a pastor, if, if it comes down to you serving and being a part and helping, right? Many, many hands make light the load. And, and when there's all the people in the right places, then we're able to serve people well. When people come through the doors, they're greeted. When they go to uh, guest services, they're greeted. When they go to a connect center, somebody's actually standing there. When they come to the store, somebody's like, hi, welcome to church. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And they get in there and they're, can I help you find a seat? You know what I mean? There's, there's people everywhere serving. But, but for me, if it came down to it, and it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm serving, but I'm not spending time with God, I would say, listen, I, I would love for you to not serve if that would create a time slot for you to spend time with God. Because you can't, at the expense of relationship with him, serve him. It doesn't work that way. So let's look. Jeremiah 2, uh, two verse 32. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Classic. Can a maid forget and neglect to wear her ornaments, like her jewelry, or a bride, her wedding gown. Like, that's significant, right? Your wedding gown is significant on your wedding day. You're not going to show up like basketball shorts, like, let's do this. What do I say? Where do I sign? All right? No, it's a big deal. She's rocking her wedding gown. She's rocking her jewelry, all that. So it's just, it's so important. It says, Yet my people have forgotten me, have forgotten me days without number. It's like day after day after day. You've remembered all these other things that were important to you. You remember to put your jewelry on. You remember to wear your new outfit, your new shoes, whatever. But you've forgotten me days without number. James chapter 4, verse 8, Amplified Classic. Come close to God and he will come close to you. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. This is Luke 1. You know, oftentimes we see Jesus was praying. What was he doing? He was fellowshipping. He was having relationship with God. Matthew chapter 24. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. I'm pretty sure they were on his nerves. He's like, you guys go ahead. I'll, I'll be there later, lots later. No, they weren't on his nerves. He was just, he wanted to spend some time with his father. He just wanted some alone time. Anybody ever been there? Like, I just need some alone time. I just need a time out. Can I just nobody talk to me right now? Right? As, as great as those are, and those typically aren't like, that's not like I need to steal away with the father. That's like I don't literally don't want to talk to you. I don't want to see your face. Right? That same kind of time out that sometimes we need in our soul, man, we need that every single day in our spirit. We, and, and, and Jesus, he did that. He made time to fellowship with God, to have a relationship with God. That's why he was so successful. That's why he was so powerful. When believers go through life and they go through the motions and they carry their Bible to church and they serve at church, but they don't actually fellowship with God or have a relationship with him, then they don't get the results that they want. They look the part, but there's no truth there. There's no depth of relationship there, and therefore there's no power there, right? It's like, it would be like if a branch was like not really connected to the tree, but it's like up there. It's like, bro, you're dried up, dried out. You got no fruit. Nobody's buying it. Yeah, you're in the tree, and yeah, you're hanging where a branch should be, right? Just because you're hanging at church don't mean you're abiding in the vine. Does that make sense? So Matthew 14, 22 and 23, immediately Jesus made his disciples get in the boat, go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was there alone. And then weird Christians were like, he went to the mountain to be closer to God. No, he didn't. He went to the mountain to be alone, you idiot. 
You know what I'm saying? Just kidding. Oh, the Bible says don't call people idiots. Father, I repent. No, he didn't. He didn't go to the mountain to be closer to God. He just went to like have like a, like a place to just chill and just check the view and fellowship with his father. Ooh, people are weird. Luke chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus withdrew himself into the wilderness to pray. Mark chapter 6, verse 46, and when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. So, you know, obviously the different accounts from the Gospels, but even different times. This time he's stealing away to the wilderness. This time he's stealing away to the mountain. All these times where we have record of Jesus making time to spend time with God. John chapter 15, verse 5. This is what I referenced earlier. I really want you to make sure you get that reference. John 15, 5. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides, which that word abides means to dwell, to be present, and to remain. You know what I mean? If you've ever had somebody um, and you felt like they were in a hurry and they didn't have time for you, and it was like kind of made you feel awkward. It's like you, you're off vibes like you're, you feel obligated to be here, but you can't wait to leave. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, if we can perceive that as human beings, like, just go already. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when, when you feel like somebody doesn't want to be with you, then it's like, okay, I, I'm, I changed my mind. I don't want to be with you either. You know what I mean? Like, why don't you go ahead and go? You know, but if we would, if we would just make time to truly abide and just settle in and just relax and be like, okay, I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes and I'm done with this. <laughs> just skip it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? But if we'll abide, if, we'll, if we'll, we'll dwell or we'll remain in this place of daily fellowship with him, everything about our life will change. Yeah. Everything about our life will change. But if we just try to look the part, we're not going to bear fruit. Because you, never in your life have you seen a branch laying on the ground flourishing and, and popping out apples. No. Apples only come from the branches that are abiding in the vine. Fruit only comes from a believer who's abiding in the vine. So this is what I want to encourage you in tonight. Uh, you know, <clears throat> yes, make time for fun. Please, I'm serious. Please make time. S some people... I'll, I'll pay for you to go have fun if you'll just smile. One, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, make time for fun. Yes, serve. Serving is not the problem. Anytime people make church or the church schedule or they're serving their problem, it's like, okay, wow. Wow. You've baffled us all. You're, you're, you're busier than everyone else in the world. So many people are able to make time to spend time with God, but you're just so busy. You, you are so important. That's sarcasm, guys. See, when people make the church or this or that their problem, it's like you're just a blame shifter. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I've been a blame shifter before. And everybody else was the problem. It wasn't, definitely wasn't me. <laughs> it was like my boss. It was my job. It was my roommates. It was anybody but me. I find somebody to point the finger at, right? But when we take personal responsibility and we take ownership of our life and we, wow, where are these guys? We take ownership of our life. We take ownership of our life. That doesn't mean we just float through life like, yeah, whatever will be, will be. No, I have a responsibility. Like, have you heard the expression, grab the horse by the reins? That means like when, like, when your brother-in-law gets bucked off the horse and almost falls down the mountain, Somebody with horse skills comes like riding over like a hero, jumps off, dismounts their horse, ties their horse to a tree, and goes and grabs the reins of that horse. Why? To take control. You got to take control of your life. Wherever you are financially, that's your responsibility to fix it or flip it or turn it around. Wherever you are physically, it's your responsibility. Grab the horse by the reins, fix it, flip it, turn it around. Wherever you are spiritually, it's your responsibility. Grab the horse by the reins. Fix it, flip it, turn it around. If we take responsibility for our life and we start making different decisions and we start making uh, you know, different priorities in our life, we will absolutely see the change. But it's, it has to be rooted in relationship with God. It cannot be performance-based. Because performance-based is so empty. Because you might be able to be like, yeah, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and 
and, and, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. But you do it for a season, and then all of a sudden when those accolades wear off or nobody cares that you're jacked, you know what I mean, or you got a new car, nobody cares, and they're over it, now all of a sudden there's no impetus or there's no, there's no drive behind you doing it, and you're just over it, and you don't care anymore. Why? Because it was all propped up. It was all phony in the first place. But when it comes from relationship with God, there's substance behind those convictions. There's substance behind those disciplines. So let me just encourage you tonight. Time is the money of life. Yes, have time for fun. And seriously, make time for fun. It's, it's healthy. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Make time for serving. Serve other people. Serve your family. Serve, you know, serve at church. But most importantly, make time. Have you ever heard somebody say, like, I just didn't have time? I've said that, like, pretty much all my life. <laughs> Facts. But what is the actual truth? I didn't make time. I had time. You get the same 24 hours everybody else has, dude. You didn't make time. You made excuses. Excuses are like buttholes. Everybody's got them, and they all stink. So if you will make time for a relationship with God. Everybody say make time. You got to make time. You got to move some stuff around. You got to put turn your phone off. Has anybody ever been on YouTube Shorts before and been like, what am I doing? I don't even like this stuff. You know what I mean? There's so many things that pull at our time. But if you'll make time for a relationship with God, your life will never be the same.